long last, the parts are all here. So we have the four exhaust valves. Um, I ended up out of desperation after waiting for nearly three months for valves to come from the Flying Standard Motor Club in the UK, uh, having these ones made. So an engineering shop um, got the blanks in and then uh, they turned, turned them to size and put the grooves in for me. Um, so very disappointed with the Flying Standard Motor Club. Uh, actually, I've sent many emails over the last month and they haven't replied to any of them. I don't know if it's because of COVID lockdown, but still getting newsletters and things like that from the club, but just don't seem to want to uh, put my money, but don't seem to want to help me with parts, which is a bit disappointing. Um, <clears throat> big shout out to Galloway Engines in Pinjara, David there, who um, has machined this head. It is amazing. It's come up like brand new. Um, the uh, inside of the thermostat housing here was all rotten. He's put a new one on there. Uh, the underside is all badly corroded. As you can see, that's come up like brand new. And he stuck to his original croak, which was really reasonable. Um, really knew what he was doing. Likes working on um, old engines and specializes in this stuff. So if you need something done, and you're in WA, Galloway Engines, Pinjara. Can't recommend them enough. That's just fantastic. Ready to go back on. So today, we're going to seat the valves. We will lap them in. Um, that will finish that part of the assembly. Then we'll put the head on, rebuild the motor, uh, all the components back on, and hopefully get the engine back in and get things back together. So we're going to start by um, lapping valves. Got another lovely box of vintage gaskets here, and um, got a nice copper gasket, head gasket. And we're going to give it a spray with some VHT copper gasket cement <coughs> and put it on. Tack up.
Buddha? Who was that? Don't worry too much about short settings, believe it or not. Apparently, uh, up until World War II, the standard end was um, short settings weren't a big deal. It was the type that you could drive. This is a, a printout for Pepper Light, and they recommend 90 to 100 foot hours. So we've got this set, about 95 foot hours. And we'll slowly start. Well, we're making progress. We've got the head on, the distributor, generator, thermostat housing, carburetor. Distributors had new points, condenser. Uh, these are um, new old stock copper core cables. Um, the original fitting into the carburetor completely rotted away. So this is a kind of uh, JB weld, specially for fuel tanks and fuel systems. And then there's a brass thread, and I've just attached an airline nipple for now, which will which will work. Um, so we are definitely making progress when you consider. A few weeks ago, this was a pile of rusty garbage. It's now um, looking looking pretty good. So next, we've got the hydraulic pump to run the front, the clutch, and then it's ready to go back in.
So we've got the engine back in um, and everything back on. The, I didn't film this because it was rather hard to film and assemble. But uh, what we've done is, is we've uh, lifted this all on with the crane. We've got the oil tanks in, fuel in. Everything's fueled up. We're ready to go. So it's time for our um, first startup. And hopefully I'll be very confident that everything's going to work. So I haven't actually tested the engine. And I'm really hoping that uh, my work has, has been done correctly because this um, took about six hours to get that engine in there. You know, so I don't think we want to get it out. But I'm fairly confident it's going to go. So let's see what happens. Thank you. tinker with the timing a little bit. Um, I think we have. We've just advanced the spark. Just a little bit. I think we've got it. Let's see how we go. Help if I switched it on. Sounds, Sounds pretty good. Bit of a rattly noise, that's from the hydraulic pump. All pressure is very good, very high actually. That. A little bit of tune up, a bit of tinkering, put all these sides back on. I've made new um, new bonnet sides for it there. There they are, one of them over here on the uh, on the Jeep. New conveyance uh, bonnet sides, we'll put those on. Um, we still have other covers to go on. day's work and I think she'll be finished.
in summing up, this has been a really good project. I thoroughly enjoyed bringing this old forklift back to life. Um, it's totally finished now, and it's a useful tool around my workshops, as well as a uh, great piece of British motoring, or British engineering history. So, this little forklift is going to be great use around the workshop. With some uh, reese jacks as safety supports, I now have a hoist for my Willys Jeep that I've built. Uh, if you um, haven't seen one of these little Strut Corp um, mini beeps before, check out um, my channel because soon I'll be putting up a, a slideshow sort of video of the construction of this. I built this completely from nothing, just from the plans from Strut Corp. So it's not a kit, it's manufactured mostly from um, plyboard and rolled metal. So um, check that out. But uh, you know, the forklift will come in useful for working underneath it, obviously, as long as it's on safety supports. Um, and also, uh, the main reason I, I've got this machine in my workshops is I, I like to work on engines like this. This is a Comma TS3 engine, which is a, is a vlog of this running, a short clip of this running on my channel, so check it out. Um, this is a 1957 two-stroke supercharged uh, diesel engine built by um, Tilly Stevens for the route. To Tilling Stevens for the Roots Group um, in the 1950s, and this is an early model. Um, but these engines weigh about 600 kilos, and this forklift moves them around no trouble whatsoever. So, yep, check out the blog on the uh, on the engine here on the, the TS3. I also have a slideshow coming of the restoration of this engine. When I got it, it was a scrapyard, scrapyard just junk. It's just a block. So I've, uh, I've rebuilt that. I love all the brass work on the forklift. All the original brass plates are still there. Although they're a little bit damaged, but I've cleaned them up best I can. So you've got the original um, electro-hydraulics manufacturer's plate, the serial numbers, the engine serial number on it, and then all the control levers have their own brass plates. And over here you've got a simple instrument panel, which has a oil pressure gauge, the original um, uh, amp meter uh, and the oil bath air filter there now it's all cleaned up I love the uh, the quirkiness of it how it's got the, the starting handle and these are the original starting handle racks uh, or clips I say to hold that um, I've put a a whizzy flash flash on it I think you gotta have one of those kids love that too but it also just adds to it um, other than that the machine is original totally uh, I love the big handbrake, all the brakes, everything's working. There was a few things I didn't film throughout the video, uh, like the manufacturing of the um, of these side panels, which were pretty straightforward. They're just a piece of sheet steel cut out and then um, some um, adhesive sort of signage done on there. The conveyancer font is the original uh, font, the same as what's on the, uh, the original logo. If you can see, it's a very hot right day here today and because this machine is too big to fit in my workshop most of the work to the actual machine has been done outside um, also added a fire extinguisher being that the fuel system and this is all original um, um, I hope to do more projects like this I love old, old English machinery and bring it back to life um, I'm very happy to have done this one especially seeing as it uh, is definitely one of the oldest um, British made forklifts in existence but the Electro Hydraulic Company manufactured the first forklifts in 1946 and this forklift is Electro Hydraulics 1946 so it's, it's, it's a great piece of uh, history and it's great to have it so I hope you've enjoyed it thank you for watching and I'll see you later